You are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, Sunday, November 27th, 2022, at the very unusual time of 3 p.m. The sun is still out. It feels very strange to be having a live stream during the day. But I thought maybe we'll try it for a game. And Anna has joined us, a whole bunch of people in the chat here. Uh, welcome to anyone who's new and doesn't normally join us for our 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Central Standard Time games. This is a very unusual time. Maybe we'll catch some different group of people, which is fine. All right, so what are we doing? Today we're playing, we're starting, this is turn one, of the third and final Murders by Mail game called The Case of the Blinded Birder. Now we've played the previous two games, which was Sherlock Holmes' Fellowship of Bones and L.A. Noir Bloom of Hollywood. Those both, uh, so that this is the three games that this company makes. They're mail order games. You order them from the company, and they're play by mail games, which means you start out with this box. It costs forty dollars, including shipping. And you, it, it's structured very much like a Sherlock Holmes consulting detective game, except you place, place your moves on a website and then you wait for an actual letter to arrive with the reply, the results of your move. It takes about a week, a little more sometimes. Then you submit your next moves and this goes on for 12 to 14 turns or so until you get to the end and solve the case. So we played the first two cases, which to me were more appealing in terms of setting. And it took us about 14 turns, about four months. And you can watch those. Those sessions are all streamed on the channel. And then I did a review of this series, thinking that we probably wouldn't play this third one. This one is sort of described as a cozy Murder mystery, I guess you might think of those as sort of Agatha Christie style English countryside cottage house. But there was some interest in playing this third one to get a complete view of the of the set. And I thought maybe we'll play it. You know, I didn't love love the other two. But it was interesting, and there was some hint that maybe this one would be a little different than the other two, and I thought maybe we would try streaming these at during the day. So if, this, if everyone who wants to join for this is happier with them at 3 p.m. or during the day, maybe we'll try to play these on weekends every weekend at 3 p.m. if we get the reply in time. All right, so... We'll take a look at this, we'll catch up in the channel, and then after the introduction, if you think you might want to play this game yourself, you can leave and come back. The other reason, I'll tell you the other reason I thought uh, it might be worthwhile playing this third one. When I did my review of these Murders by Mail games, let me just put this off to the side, one of the things I said was that while it didn't really, it, it was a little drawn out, I didn't love everything, I, I thought there was some real potential here, but one of the things that appealed to me from this series was the idea of buying it as a gift for someone. For $40, you're giving someone a gift that lasts four months and sends them letters in the mail. It's a very cool novelty, something very different as a gift. And the difficulty level was on the easy side, and you can play it in, as long as you want. So I thought these would be good gifts, and I was almost ready to send one to my little niece. And then I thought, okay, maybe this is a reason to play all three because maybe we'll find we'll fi it's possible this one would be the better gift. Anything else to catch up on on the chat? I've tweaked the chat a little bit. I uh, don't to make the text a little smaller and the spacing a little bigger. I still don't love it. I'll probably try to make it a little more compact. Um, 
we should say, we should talk a little bit about last night. So last night I played the first chapter of Key Enigma Calling Card, which should be right there. I can't see it because the camera's blocking it, but I believe it's there. And um, that was the first chapter of eight I played, and it was a pretty brutal stream. It felt like I almost got broken. It was, we had some troubles there with the technology. At the end, though, it was intriguing enough that we're going to continue. So we do have to schedule the other chapters of that game. Uh, it was a rough, it was a rough first stream, though. Hopefully it'll get a little bit better. Uh, if you managed to stick it through that without going crazy, congratulations to you. All right. Um... If there's nothing else, let's take a look at this case of the blinded birder. If you haven't watched the previous two streams, the previous two murders by mail playthroughs, um, this is going to be new to you. Otherwise, you can see it's very identical. It's a different colored binder, but the format is exactly the same. The rules are exactly the same, but we're going to go over this again. I'm going to try not to bore. Most of the people here have watched me play the previous two Murders by Mail, so I'm not going to spend as much time as I did there talking about it, but for the first turn, let's go over it. So here are the rules. Let's look at them. This came cut already by accident. Okay, 30 to 60 minutes, which means I think when, we, when this first case will take us a little bit longer, this first turn will take us a little bit longer because we're going to want to read the newspaper but in the after this turns will be under an hour you need a web browser just to submit your moves not to actually play the game okay so let's take a look at the rules to remind you how this works and what's different here basically it just says we read everything and we're going to meet three investigators. All of these games by this company gives you control of three investigators. And one of the clever ideas of this game, if you're familiar with Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, on each turn you pick a location to go to, mostly from a map. The twist here is that we actually pick three locations each turn, and we have to decide which of our three investigators to send to each location. And they have their specialties, so one of the fun decisions is deciding who to send where. All right, so we make our moves, we submit them, we wait for the reply to come in the mail. It's always of the same form. It's always just a double-folded four sheets of paper, essentially. One is just the cover. And then we keep playing until we're ready to solve it. Then we open up these questions, and then we go online and solve it and get a little epilogue. Now, at the bottom of the rules... Of all of the three games we've played from this company is this little statement here okay it says always remember the killer is actively trying to thwart your investigation your choices can affect outcomes for characters surrounding the case with legal romantic or even mortal consequences one of the big things I harped on in my review is that this is total bullshit for the first, at least for the first two games we played. This was not true at all. This was a promise that sounded exciting and was nowhere to be seen in the Sherlock Holmes or L.A. Noir game. Will it be different in this case? Is this the case where they created that idea that things can happen based on our choices, we shall find out. But that's one of the things that's, that will be curious to see. Okay, so there's our rules. All right. And then all three of the games have a slightly different documentation for introduction. And this one, it looks like it's placed in a letter that are hiring us, so we're going to take a look at that. Oh, it's a long letter. I see. All cursive. The cursive, there's a reason it's called cursive. Because it's a curse. 
Not because it's curved. It's painful to read cursive, but that's what we'll do. We'll read this introduction in a second. I guess we should read it first, and then we'll get to our three investigators. All right, well, looks like we've got something to read, but this is looks like a handwritten letter, like you would get from someone. That's pretty cool. All right, so this stream's gonna take us a little longer as we read through all of this. Let's go through it together. All right, so we've got me in my garden. My niece Mary took this. It's rather good, don't you think? Uh, okay, so we're set in 1955. That's our time period here. And this was a letter that was sent from Miss Cecily Miller. Bockerley Village, C78, Middleshire, England. Cecily reminds me of... Um, the importance of being earnest. If you've never seen The Importance of Being Earnest, which is Oscar Wilde, there's some performance of it. It's a, it's a play, it's a book you would read, but um, Cecily is one of the love interests in that. Okay, May 5th, 1955. My dearest friend, it's Cecily, Cecily Miller. It's been too long since I wrote but my excuse this time is unique and, I dare say, rather exciting. Things have been far too busy here in Bockerley. Am I, am I getting all the letters of that right? Bockerley? Is that a real place? Things have been far too busy here in Bockerley for me to maintain my epistolary habits. I don't know that word, epistolary. I guess it, um, I don't know. Is she talking about her letter writing? Epistolary habits. For there has been a murder. That is why I'm writing today, and it's why I intend to send many more letters to you in the coming weeks. I need your help, you see. I need your judgment. The chat says... And it says, epistle is a letter. So letter writing. Okay, there we go. So we've learned a new word. Letter writing habits. Epistolary habits. Okay, she says, there's been a murder, and I'm going to write to you to keep you informed about the murder so that you can give me advice. She says, that's why I intend to send many more letters to you in the coming weeks. I need your help, you see. I need your judgment. It happened at dusk last Sunday. Mr. Rupert Allwright... A 55-year-old avid birder, thin, frail, asthmatic, and introvert from Netherwellow, was shot dead in Borley Wood early Monday. His cold body caught the eye of a warden, Max Jarvis, it looks like, who paused his game survey to call the police. Our good inspector, Swift, rushed to the scene, stomped about for five minutes, and promptly declared it a hunting accident. How he could be so sure, I could not fathom. It was a confounding mystery, and thus required bold techniques. She's drawn us a little diagram here. That's where the death was. There's Borley Wood. You can see the Runnel River. There's Netherwellow. Looks like train tracks, the rail to London. Where Cecily's house is. Looks like maybe some churches there. Bockerley, and there's the post office where she mailed this letter. All right, I love it. So far, this is feels more real than the other cases. Okay, page two. My front window has a fine view of the lane to the post office. I kept my eye there, and after only three days, noticed Inspector Swift making his way with a brace of letters in hand. I quickly found an empty box, twined it closed, and slapped a random letter on it from my desk for added effect. Then I made after him, fast as my cane would let me, and managed to intercept him just as he completed his errand. 
So she faked like she was bringing some, something to the post office to run into him. Oh, Inspector Swift, I said. What a coincidence. I was just on my way to post this package. Ah, very good, Miss Cecily, he said, already suspicious. I cornered him in the doorway. You know, I've heard a touch about that terrible business with Rupert Allwright. Oh, of course you have, he said. Might I ask what the latest news is? Have there been any fresh developments? I straightened his broad shoulders and winced. Ugh. As I said to the newspaper, it's all very simple. Albright took a birding stroll at dusk. It was getting dark. Some hunter took him for a doe and put a bullet in his eye. These kinds of accidents are more common than one thinks. Every detail supports this conclusion. It would be interesting, though, to see if you missed anything, I said. You know, just to be sure it wasn't murder. He blinked at me, bemused. I continued, you know, I'm a birder as well. Not as avid as Mr. Allwright, but it's something I enjoy. Yes, I've seen you with your field glasses looking out your window, and not just at birds. Exactly. As we birders gaze upward, our eyes are sometimes drawn back to more earthly interests. When a person we know wanders by, it's only natural to take an innocent peek. Let me guess, you took an innocent peek as I was on my way to the post office. Well, I'll admit, you are right, Inspector. Birders are curious creatures. It's what draws us into the hobby in the first place. Now, in the newspaper, you said that the left lenses of Mr. Albright's field glasses were shattered by the bullet that struck him in the eye. Yes, it was remarkable. The shot went straight through, broke the glass at both ends before ending the poor fellow's life. Uh, so, but how could a bullet have done that if he were looking upwards at the time. He stared at me, and I continued. Mr. Allwright was not looking at birds, Inspector. He was looking at someone in the woods. And that someone shot him dead. I placed a hand on his arm. Doesn't one like to append a bit more Spend a bit more time investigating such a tragedy? Yeah, it's tragic, he said, but in my uh, professional opinion, to start, it's also plain. Mr. Allwright hadn't a reason in the world to be murdered. He was a gentle old man. I bristled at the use of adjective old, but managed an agreeing smile. Ah, yes, 55 is very old, but old people can occasionally be worth murdering, don't you think? He looked down at me. Ah, uh, I sometimes appreciate the urge. Often, I said, ignoring his joke, Old people are more attractive to murderers, given wills and estates and whatnot. All right was penniless, a widower. He'd recently moved back in with his mother. They were both congregants at the Eggwines and often needed church charity, which tells you something. In fact, when we interviewed the mother about his finances, he caught himself, his, how narrow his eyes went. It made him look quite menacing, and I was glad I'd never been a criminal under his gaze. Goodness, I said, have you swallowed something? Don't you and your mystery club go sticking your noses into this, Mum. 
It's really none of your business. And with that, he left me standing at the post office alone. Could I obey him? No. For to suggest that a murder in my village counts as none of my business is like saying a touch of pneumonia isn't worth mentioning to Dr. Thumpridge. And could, if left unattended, ruin everything. And in that moment, I noticed the letter he'd snatched from my desk was the one... The letter I'd snatched from my desk was the one that you sent me last... Was the one that you sent me last. Inspiration flashed. You were what I needed. You were who I needed. Though we share a passion for mysteries, your way of thinking about them is entirely different from my own. I haven't your gifts for strategy. I've enclosed with this letter a meager case file I've assembled. If you'll but tell me where to start, I will. I do hope your game, your devoted friend, Cecily Miller. P.S. I've been looking for additional allies, and two of the members of my mystery book club are willing to sign on. They're both delightful people. I've written a bit about each of them, which I've included within. Cheers. Okay, and she's drawn a picture. That's us. That's us, the detective. And there's her. She's drawn as a little old lady with a cane. And then we've got Imogen, who looks like a cat person, and Vicard. Okay, so there's her with her cane. There's Imogen with a cat or dog in her hands, and Vicard, who's a man of some sort. Okay, and then there was another picture we skipped over. So here is her explaining to the inspector that if our murdered Mr. Albright was looking at a bird, then he wouldn't be shot through his looking glasses. If he was shot through his looking glasses, he had to be looking at the person who shot him. Okay, so there's our introduction. Now, I don't know what your take on it is. If you have watched the previous streams, to me, this is unexpectedly the most compelling setup for these cases. As M.E. says, we're helping a little village busybody, a little nosy old woman in this town, but the setup is much more believable. It's sort of like we're the friend in her mystery club who think, who's more of a focused detective, and she's roped us in, and... They're not really, it, it's more of a, a collaborative teamwork to solve this than our other cases where we're the detectives in charge of everything, just bossing everyone around. This is much more of a, maybe it's a murder, maybe it isn't. And uh, it does feel like we could get her into trouble. Like there's a murderer on the loose in this small town. It does feel a little bit like she's in peril in a way that our previous cases weren't, right? Like, this one feels like this, this old woman could get herself killed if we're not careful. And just much more... The other part that's so much more believable about this is that this is much more of a believable setup for letter writing, Right? Like our other cases, you didn't have to be doing it by letters, but it was. Here, it feels like this has to be done by letters. Like she's in a small town. You're not, she's not hiring a PI. She's just getting help from her friend. And we're going to exchange letters about it. It, it feels, it feels, and we're friends. Like I, I, this is much more satisfying a setup. Okay. So far, so good. She's going to tell us a little bit now about the, different people that we've got here. So first, there's a little bit about herself. It says, your investigators. All of us are proud founding members of the Bockerly Library Murder Mystery Book Club. And she's obviously a little bit of an artist. If I 
It's not even about pronouncing, but if you see me misreading the cursive, like getting an F for a G or something, and I mispronounce a word, let me know so I don't keep doing it the whole time. Okay, here's our friend Cecily Miller. Just little old me, village spinster. Village spinster and busybody, aspiring novelist, people say. I'm good at understanding human nature, noticing details, and being stubborn when it's called for. They are so very right. Okay, so she's good at understanding human nature, noticing details, and being stubborn. Okay, Cecily. There's our Cecily. Then we've got Lady Imogen Bickford Smithy. Looks like a rich woman, and it's a little dog she's got. Young widow of the rather wealthy Lord Bickford Smithy, Imogen is, frankly, a bored and conflicted traditionalist. Smart as a whip, she's very good at upper crust mingling and anything involving fast driving or fast thinking. Her dog, Wooster, excels at sniffing out clues. Just as a little piece of trivia, Wooster was my dog's name growing up because we lived on Wooster Street in Manhattan in Soho. His full name was the Prince of Wooster Street. And uh, as you know, America is a spin-off British colony, so lots of places in America are, have English roots, and Wooster Street probably same same family route. Uh, okay, so she's good at the upper crust stuff if we have to talk to rich people. She's also good at fast driving and fast thinking. So if we need some fast reaction and fast thinking, we would send Imogen, not Cecily. Cecily's probably not the fastest. Okay, and then we've got the vicar. Vicar Dermont, Dermot, Dilberthon. Dilberston. Dermot Dilberston. Buckerley's beloved holy man, Dermot, runs St. Peter's Anglic Anglic Anglican. That's how you know I don't go to I'm not a church going person. That word doesn't come off my lips cleanly. St. Peter's St. Peter's Anglican with a gentle, patient laugh. He's unmarried, which is a crime I intend to correct someday. She's going to try to set him up with someone, I guess. Though a bit naive, he's excellent at getting people to trust him and share their myriad sins. Okay, he's a bit naive. That's his weakness. He's naive. So don't send him to someone where we want him to pick up on a lie or nervousness. Cecily's good at reading human nature. He's terrible at it. He just believes whatever people tell him. But this is a little bit like our old case. Like he's so naive and innocent that people might confess to him things that they might not confess to someone else. And especially people that might not trust someone else might open up to him. Okay, I like it. Cecily, Imogen, and the vicar at St. Peter's. He looks trustworthy. All right. So, this is all very common for all of these, all this whole set. We have an introduction letter that hires us. We've got our three investigators. And then we've got a directory. Postal Office Bockerly Directory, including nearby villages of Netherwellow, Fairbarrow Field, Pibbetscombe, Lickenford, and Monkston, 1954 to 1955. Price three pence. Printed by Bradford Publishing House, 182 Wallop Street, Bockerly E7, Middleshire, England. Principal S. H. Britt, for the Bockerly Post Office Directory Association, United. All right, let's just take a look at what this is. 
So this is following the format as before. First, leaving this aside for a second, we've got our general directory. We could go to any of these places. Most of them won't have stuff in it. We'll have to have a reason to look someone up. Uh, I think we've got a bit of a problem. Oh, okay. So it's misprinted. You can see it starts on page seven at R. I thought we might be in trouble. There's page eight, some ads, page nine, 10, but then it goes back to three. So this would be page one, page two, page three, four, five, six, then seven. So I might take it out. It looks like it was just bound wrong. So I'll probably, before our next turn, I'll take the staples out and fix it. It looks like it just should have been bound like a, like a this. All right, no big deal. We're not missing anything. Okay. So notice there isn't a separate business directory. It's all one. It's a little unusual. Very often these directories have a separate business section. That just means we're going to have to spend more time studying this and getting acquainted for what kinds of stores and groceries there are available to us. If, for example, we wanted to visit a drugstore, there's no way to look that up or a doctor. Oh, wait, so sorry, I was wrong. I've missed, somehow I looked, skipped right over this. All right, so there is a business directory. All right, so cancel all that. All right, we'll want to look at this and scan it to familiarize ourselves with what kind of places are available. Um, and then what have we got? At the back, it says, Notes on the Centenary Edition. In issuing the Bockerly Post Office Director for 1954-95, the publishers have pleasure in intimating that this volume is the centenary issue of the directory, the first edition being printed in 1854. The publishers beg to express their thanks for the liberal patronage bestowed on the work during that long period and desire to state that as formerly no effort has been spared to render it as accurate and complete as possible. They, however, do not hold themselves responsible for any error or omission. Throughout this directory, letters and numerals affixed to the name of each place indicate the postal district and block number in which the desired person or persons can be found. Posting letters or packages to the person's name and address code, such as N7 for the Besham's Theater, will provide the post office staff everything they need for prompt and accurate delivery, so as, well, instructions. This is not, you need it for us, but it's basically just a little bit of flavor. All we care about is their numbered address. That's what we'll put in for our move. For more detail, please refer to the Bakerly Touring Map, issued under separate cover, as has been revised and brought up to date by Surveyors J. Bartholomew & Son Limited. And in addition, we'll show in color the postal districts of the villages properly covered. In the business appendix can be found useful details regarding businesses, various institutions, and public offices. All communication on directory business should be addressed to the Edison Post Office directory. Da, 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 da. Addressed to Mr. S.E. Britt at the same address. Okay. And here we have some contacts. These are people that will have general information for us. This is something we see in all of these kinds of Sherlock Holmes consulting detective games. This is a note from Cecily. It says, all of the addresses around Bockerly use a letter number code like B18 for identification. These are the easiest, this is the easiest way for you to tell we investigators where to go. And here's some general context. Inspector Swift, he's sometimes more amenable to questions at his home. His wife, Felicity, is delightful. He's at C75. Our coroner and local medical genius, Dr. Pai, is usually at his office at E2. 
My old friend, Graham, is a reporter at the newspaper. He's always there and good for a bit of gossip. <laughs> she likes her gossip. Agnes Woe runs the Bockerly Historical Society and is an oracle in reverse. What does that mean? An oracle? It's not. Yeah, what's that? an oracle in reverse? So instead of seeing the future, she sees the past. Okay. If all else fails, one often finds ideas among the library stacks. For things like births, deaths, and adoptions and marriages, try the county records office. Okay. So there's our directory. The loveliest place in England, in my humble opinion, Cecily Miller. I like this Cecily. Okay, that's our directory. Then we have a newspaper. This is a pretty serious newspaper. Is this really for this town is producing such a newspaper? The Bockerly Chronicle. Looks like it. So, as you know from these streams, we will eventually have to read every word of this. Normally, lately in these games, we have not been reading the newspaper all in one shot in the beginning. Although this game might suggest we should, just because on turn one. But let's just take a look at this. It's the Bockerly Chronicle. It's a nice, large-sized newspaper. It's got some ads in it. Remember, we're in 1954 here. I'm not sure what this is. This looks like she's scribbled on this. I'm not sure, though. She hasn't written any other notes on the paper. Let's see. We've got local stories in Bockerley, then a story in the nearby town of Netherwellow, then... News from America, Albert Einstein died. That will be nice to read it. Some local ads. First week of May. Okay, let's look at the back here. Letter to the editor. Who should be ashamed of our bloodlust? Model and nightclub hostess, Ruth Ellis. International news, 77 day in Le Mans. This will all be real. These will be real stories, these international ones. Local Ali's box of songbirds found near tracks. That seems like it could be related to our case. Mostly forms seen at Morden uh, Cemetery. Then we've got some announcements here. Some local announcements about an auction, a missing dog, a personals. Sorry, let me just move this up a bit for you. Announcements, personals, missing dog, help wanted. And then a little bit of science writing. So we'll go through these in detail and read them all. Whether we read them all today or not, I'm not sure. We could certainly read our cases that appear clearly to be real significant for us, especially if we think we want to go there first. Okay, there's our newspaper. Quite nice, quite compelling. So far, I'm loving this case more than I did the others. All right, and then we've got, it looks like a map. And then we're basically done. So let's look at our map. The village of Bockerley and surrounds with index. Issued by Bradford Touring Map. 182 Westgate, Netherwell, N12. So we could stop off of their office if there's something wrong with the map and complain. Two, this surely this wouldn't have been two pounds, so this is what two pence and or I don't know, 1954. Two pounds seems expensive for a map. The newspaper was three pence, so this is probably two pence and six, whatever it is. What's the what's the other one? All right, so nothing else here. If we lay it out so we can see it here. Yeah, get it up to the table. So I didn't say the shilling. Okay, shillings. Two pence, six shillings. All right, so I haven't 
talked about this with I haven't reminded us with this case, although I talked about it with the others. Um, you can't you can only play this game once. Like even if you didn't write on anything, you can't play it twice because the website has an account. It tracks your turns and your moves and it won't let another place person play it. So you can't pass this along. It's $40. That includes all of the cost of any future mailings to you and the shipping. So it's one time cost 40 bucks. You play it and you can't pass it along. You can't replay it. Okay. So here's our map of Bakerly. What have we got here? It's a pretty small map, but it's nicely illustrated and very clear. There's our railroad. So if we look at Cecily's, let's see if we can just pinpoint everything. If we look at Cecily's drawing, Borley Wood is in the upper left. Rail to London, we can see this says to London. And down here to Brighton, where I lived for a year in Sussex. There's the bridge. And there's the river. Um, we don't know which river is it she's talking about. Let's find it. So her house, Bockerly Post Office, Borley Wood. Where do we see Borley Wood? Is it is this bridge, this bridge, this bridge? This is a tunnel, so it's not going to be that one. This looks like a big bridge, so... I think maybe she's talking about here. Netherwellow. Where's Netherwellow? Oh, here's Netherwellow. So maybe she is talking about here. Where's the church? She's got a church in her drawing here. So is that church here? No. Is it here? Maybe we should expand our look. I like to get myself settled here. There's Nether Wellow off to the lower left. There's the thing. The death happens somewhere here or here, depending on which bridge it is. Assuming it's this bridge, shouldn't our death be in here in Borley Wood? Why are we not seeing... Oh, here we go. Okay, Borley Wood's all the way over here. So it's a very compact map she's drawn. So here's Borley Wood. So the death right here... Maybe in Heller Hole is where the death occurred. Heller Hole, that's a little scary. Let me see if I can bring you over there. Uh, that won't do it on this screen. I won't do it on this screen. So there's Borley Wood and Heller Hole. And then the whole map is here. So the church is over here on the other side of this railroad, somewhere over here. I'm sure we could find the Barker we posted. Okay, so there's St. Peter's Church. This is where our vicar is. Probably the post office will be a little bit down here somewhere. Do you see it? Probably going to be labeled. Well, I suppose we could look these places up by their number. And then we would find them. Let's do it just for fun to make sure we get our bearings here. Let's find the post office. Government office, post, police station, post office is B29. Okay, so let's get a good picture of this map. 
We've got E's over here. Looks like N. Netherwell is N. E is for, I don't know what neighborhood E is. Then there's C neighborhoods and a B neighborhood and an H. I guess we'll get, we'll, we'll come to know this place over time, but I said the post office was B. What did I say? Post office was B29. Okay, where's our B? Okay. B29 right there. There's the post office. Okay, we'll mark up this map with stickers as we explore it. But there's the post office. Right up, right to its northeast is the church. We already discussed how Borley Wood is all the way on the other side of town. That's probably where the murder happened, somewhere in Heller Hole. Sounds scary, or somewhere in there. And then her house is somewhere. Did she give us her return address on her letter? Where's her little letter? Yes, C78 is her address on her letter. So here is her house, right? Here's C77, where's C78? Right there. There's where Cecily lives. Okay, so we've situated ourselves. We know where everyone lives and we've got our nice map. None of the rest of it makes that much sense, but it's very pretty. We could just take a look. There's Netherwellow, nicely illustrated. We've got stables. We've got in the upper right, Clement House. Might be a little off screen here. All right. Let's check in with the chat. Woods are in the upper left. River is the big one. And it says, I have to go. Seems an interesting case. Pick the first three places wisely. I know you would, of course. Okay. So. That's it, huh? All right. I didn't mark this up, but I should. Okay, so our victim is Mr. So let's get our bearings here. If you've just, if you haven't played us, if you haven't played the, these uh, the other of these games with me, our move now, the decision we make now is which three places to investigate and who to send where. We've got our rich person who's fast driver and fast thinker, smart as a whip. We've got Cecily, the woman who's we're friends with whose attention to detail and stubbornness and the person that they people trust but a bit naive this is the this is interesting because this is the first time we've been given someone that we're sort of scared to send somewhere like we're scared to send him anywhere where his naivete would harm us but we got to pick three places. Okay, so now the person who's died is Rupert Albright. So naturally, it makes sense that our first person to talk to, one of the first people to talk to, is Rupert's widow or, or family, if he's got a son, a daughter, etc., This location of his death is not enough to know where it was, right? I guess we should read the paper. Let's read the paper and see if maybe we've got a story about our death in the paper that will give us some more specifics. 
And here's our story about our death. So let's read the story. Okay. Shooting death of local birder declared an accident by police. The shooting death of Netherwell resident... Let me see if I actually can come up and do one little thing at a time. It's a little bit bigger if I do this right. The shooting death of Netherwell a resident and avid birder Rupert Albright was the result of a hunting accident, said Inspector Leonard Swift of the Bockerley Police. We found Mr. Albright's body last Monday on the morning after his shooting, lying at the edge of Borley Wood. By noon, Constable Harlan and I had concluded a thorough investigation of the scene. The location and condition of the body proved he'd been walking along the northern bank of Heller Hole at dusk, looking at birds through his field glasses when a rifle shot from within the woods struck him in the left eye. He was instantly killed. Okay. It was a result of a remarkably of remarkably poor luck, said Swift. The shot went clean through his field glasses, shattering the leftward gla lenses on its way. I've never seen anything like it. Police looked into the man's affairs and found no reason to suspect foul play. By all accounts, he was a quiet, retiring gentleman of 55 who kept to himself. He was, quite simply, in the wrong place at the wrong time. We've long had trouble with deer poaching, in Borley Wood, continued Swift, this sad occurrence demonstrates yet another reason why hunting there is disallowed. Lots of people visit the paths by the river banks. Last thing they need is to be dodging bullets. When asked if he thinks we will ever know the person who fired the shot, Swift was cautious. Poachers don't trust the police force. The blighter who fired that shot knew that they were breaking the law. They'll never come forward to take responsibility. We'll keep looking, but cases like this usually go unsolved. He doesn't seem all that concerned here. When asked why an inquest was not arranged, Inspector Swift replied, it's the mutual decision of myself and Coroner Pye that an inquest would shed no further light on this case. Given the evidence at the scene and the history of similar accidents nearby, we're convinced our decision is the right one. I want to make a note of a couple things here. History of similar incidents nearby. What history of similar incidents? That would be something we'd like to know. Maybe the Historical Society. Rupert Albright's mother, Miss Ophelia Albright of Netherwell, said she was saddened with the outcome of the investigation, but she was satisfied with Inspector Swift's work, adding that she hopes the police will release the body soon so she can bury her son and mourn in peace. Well, that doesn't sound promising in terms of her having some alternate theories. It sounds like she has no alternate theories. All right, let's just write down... He was walking along the northern bank of Heller Hole. So I think visiting the scene of the crime at Heller Hole would be a very good candidate location to go to. Remember, we treat these, we sort of role play these, right? And you want to get to the scene while it's fresh. So that would be a good place to go to first. I always like to go... Ah, okay. Okay. So it's always good to visit the deceased person's house. Now we were thinking, ah, his mother's not going to know anything. I don't. I think she doesn't. She probably doesn't know anything. But he lived there, right? So his possessions are there, and that's what we want to search. We want to search and see if there's anything in his house that would tell us why someone might want to kill him. So I think going to his house is a very good candidate to go. Going to the scene of the crime is a very good candidate. And then talking, uh, we could talk to the Historical Society. It feels a little early for that. The other place is the coroner, perhaps. Although I don't know what more we're going to gain. I mean, he's shot through the eye. It feels like the coroner doesn't have much to tell us. 
But I wonder if the medical examiner might have items on his body when he was killed. Items in his jacket. Let's just see. There was another article that seemed relevant to us. Let's, can we just read this one and this one? Let's read these two other articles before we make any final decision. Charles Dill of Bockerley, foreman of a crew performing line maintenance for the railroad, found a box of the Tessel Cross found a box south of the Tessel Cross Bridge on the east side of the tracks, five feet from the grade stones at a break in the trees where you can see Rabauni Castle. He untied a cord around the box, dumped it out, and was horrified to find two mummified songbirds wrapped in paper. The box was a jewelry run company, shipping box, hand-labeled kitchen, box contained two small packages of newspaper wrapping. Paper was determined to be from a 1952 issue of the Bockerley Chronicle. One paper was around a yellow canary. The other contained a bright green parakeet. Both bodies were bone dry, but with their brilliantly colored feathers intact. Looked almost alive, said Dill. Newspapers had no mailing address attached except a star and letter B on the masthead indicating they had been delivered on a Bockerley village route. Remember, when we saw this paper, I said, what is this weird thing? Now we know. This means a paper delivered on... It's a note that the delivery person makes. A star and a letter B on the masthead indicating they had been delivered on a Bockerly village route. Two packages were wrapped in a tea towel with embroidery of a pig in one corner and the numerals 49 in the other. It's a mystery for sure, said Dill, but it's given me and the boys down at Pints something to talk about. Okay, so this feels like it's probably a side case i'm guessing like may not have anything to do with our main mystery but could be a side case both of our games so far in this series have had one little side case and and tina says there are taxidermy shops in the directory that's a good idea um but not not for our initial work our initial work is our dead murdered guy and then we've got another local story here about a ghostly form seen at Morden Cemetery. Um, actually, before we move on from this, let's just make sure we know where this box was found to see if make sure it wasn't found right near our case. The Trestle Cross Bridge on the east side of the track. So it's definitely not near the scene of our crime, since that's here, and the bridge is here, the trestle cross bridge on the east side of the tracks. So I'm guessing that this is trestle cross. Well, this is another bridge. I don't know what you would call the trestle cross. This seems like the big one, but we do have locations for both of these, so we could look them up. But either way, the murder was nowhere near there. Okay. And we'll start marking locations of people to help us keep our bearings. Um, okay, so and we want to note here, this is, means a Bockerly route Bockerly village route Bockerly village route Okay And what's this other story here Ghostly form seen near at Morden Cemetery 
A trio of elderly dog walkers, including Miss Rosamund Rollin, Mr. Boward Vicknair, and Mrs. Bethany Saylor, all of Bockerley, witnessed dancing lights and the ghostly form of a person behind the Morden Cemetery just before dawn last Tuesday. Dogs noticed her first, said Saylor, started pulling and whining, and we look up, and there she is, floating back in the trees. She circled and stopped and knelt over, and then the dogs got barking, and she just disappeared, just like that. It came out of the old squires, if you ask me, said Miss Rowland, referring to the nearby Iron Age standing stones. Lots of old souls drawn to those rocks. Mrs. Mr. Vicknair presented a different theory on the identity of the ghost. Don't think it was a woman. Wasn't dressed like a woman. That was plain. I wonder if it was the soul of that Albright fellow what died in the woods. Sometimes did see him on our early walks, birding midst those graves and old trees. Dying like he did? Who's got more cause to be restless? Okay, that's a big clue for us. They're saying our murdered guy was frequently birding midst the graves and old trees. So where is the cemetery they're talking about? Morden Cemetery. Well, we could just try to find it, but we've got a directory here, so let's look it up. Morden Cemetery E24 Not where he was killed It's on the other side of the whole place E24 is here So there's Morden Cemetery Note it on the paper, E24. So our guy Albright was often seen here. We could try to search that area. And she thinks it happened near... She says it came from the old squire, which is here, the squire stone. So it looks like a little mini Stonehenge type stuff. So I'm just going to put a little note that she thinks it came from E23. Amidst the graves and old trees, he would be right in the cemetery. All right, so we've got some spotting of our guy in here for some reason. We might search there and see if anyone knows him. There's an interesting archaeological site here. Denham Hill Archaeological Site. That's curious. All right, last thing in the paper before we move on. I mean, we'll have to read all of it at some point. But let's look at these announcements to see if there's anything important here. Due to Lawrence and Judy welcome the birth of their third daughter, Chloe. Delilah Duran died May 1st, Middleshire County Hospital, age 73, survived by her son, Gillies of London. An auction at Huckle and Shaw, antiquities and rarities of museum quality. Anonymous agented bids are, are arrangeable early. Dial E10. Help on at home packers and movers. Good attention to detail and a requirement. Fair pay and work hours apply at Jolly Run Freight Yard. Remember the package we found was Jolly Run. issue the box was a jolly run company shipping box hand labeled kitchen i see it was a packing so from this paper here it was looks like it might have been a moving box and there's the jolly run company that we could go visit then we've got a missing dog, white and black chihuahua, answers to Corky. Generous reward offered. So if we come across a chihuahua called Corky, let's return it. And then CL, I so wish to meet again, await me at ROC Sunset, JS. 
That's not, our person is CM, Cicely Miller, so we don't know who these people are, so we probably shouldn't be sticking our nose into their business. Uh, okay, catching up with the chat, there's some messages in spam that if one of our moderators could block that person, I see message deleted one, but if you block that person, it'll remove the rest of them. Okay, so let's decide our places to go. Any ads here, I guess? We should look at the ads to make sure there's nothing interesting here. Um, you want it, we have it. Toys, books, leather goods. Brian's department store. Okay. There's a theater. They're putting on a pantomime, Mother Goose, and Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe. Mantle's Garages, is your car road ready if you need to tune up your car? Then we've got a concert of spring music at the outdoor theater. Hey, look what I see. With a special remembrance for our fellow singer, Rupert Albright. Looks like Rupert was a singer. Interesting. Uh, we have a drugstore advertisement. And then we've got some professors de debating the Iron Age stuff. Where did we just see an acronym? Oh, ROC. This little personals. Let's just mark that in case there's a meaning for the acronym. All right, so these are local stories. We'll want to read these. We'll want to read this stuff at some point. It could very well be related to our case, but we're, we don't have to do it now. All right, so let's decide where we want to go. Um, we're going to go to the scene of the murder at Heller Hole. And we're going to, let's find Albright's house of his mother, and let's visit her. And maybe the coroner. Those, those seem like reasonable places to go, if he's got stuff on him, maybe. All right, let's find Albright. Albright O, N46 is the mother. All right, so maybe we need to get out our notepad here. All right, places we want to go. Scene of murder, which is Heller Hole. which is C7. C7. And then Albright's mother, or Albright's house, slash mother, which is N46. And then our third place, and we should be thinking about who we want to send to. So this, the murder should be Cecily, our woman, right? Because she's got attention to detail, she notices things, and she's a fellow birder, and she's not some stuck-up snob woman who doesn't want to get her shirt, her shoes dirty. So Cecily should go to the scene of the crime and dig around the dirt there. Maybe we send the vicar to talk to the mother and look around at the room because she's not going to lie to him, probably. And then the question is, Lady Imogen, who's smart as a whip, fast thinking... Do we send her the coroner or do we send her somewhere else? Where else would we send her? I don't want to send her to this side case thing. 
And it seems premature to send her to these various, this ghost, that's again, that's a little side case. What else from our letters are we interested in? There was a weird thing where the, the police guy was posting a bunch of letters. What, and it wasn't seem like he tried to hide something from us. What was the... She says, what a coincidence. He went to the post office. A, a whole bunch of letters. Okay. There was something where he starts to tell us something and then he says, never mind. He says, not a murder. We say, you might want to look into this more. He says, Albright was penniless, a widower, recently moved back in with his mother. They were both congregants at a church. So we could send the vicar to that other church to read about him. It's not the vicar's church. It's a different church. St. Egwene's. Let's get the address of that. Churches. So St. Egwene's Catholic Church is N6. So one thing we could do is we could send our vicar at St. Peter's over to this other congregation and he might get some inside information about our guy. So he says he interviewed the mother about his finances and then he catches himself realizing he shouldn't be talking about it. He says, there ain't none of your business. Okay, so we were already planned to go to the mother's house. We were going to send the vicar, but another option would be to send the rich woman to the mother's house and send the vicar to this place. Or we send the rich woman, uh, Imogen, to the coroner and we go to the other church on the next turn. Let's see what the chat says. History Society of the Detective. Yeah, we'll want to go to the History Society of the Detective eventually. Send the woman with the dog to the crime scene. That's an interesting idea. The Remembrance Service. Was, do we have a date on the re Remembrance Service? Yes, we do. Concert of Spring Music at N7. This Sunday afternoon. This Sunday. Oh, look, and it's St. Edwin. So that's like the same. Is, is that the same location of the church that I wrote down? Seven. Is that what I wrote down in the intro for the church? No, that was N6. So N6 is the church, and then right next door is the outdoor theater that the church uses. So those are two different places. The church and the outdoor theater that the church uses are two different places. All right, let's see. Let's catch back on the chat. Uh, Vicar to the church, Imogen to the crime scene. Boy, you guys want to send Imogen to the crime scene because of the dog, huh? Let's just, let me read, read what it says to her. Let's see. Young widow of rather of wealthy ward Bickerford Smith. The Imogen is frankly a bored and conflicted traditionalist. Smart as a whip, she's very good at upper crust mingling and anything involving fast driving or fast thinking. Her dog Wooster excels at sniffing out clues. You guys were right. Wooster excels at sniffing out clues. Okay, good catch, guys. Wooster. So, so this is how I got to think about it. 
I shouldn't. I'm. I'm always thinking like she doesn't look like she's gonna get her shoes dirty looking for clues. But it's Wooster, the dog, that's gonna do the sniffing for clues. Okay. So we're gonna send Imogen to the scene of the crime with Wooster. Then let's send Cecily, who's good at understanding human nature, to the mother's house. Or the vicar to the mother's house. Where? What's the third place we're going to want to go to? I feel like we should go to the coroner, right? Someone has to go to the coroner. Emily says, Cecily's good at noticing detail. The difference between sending the wrong person and the right person to a place is pretty small. And I like, I think the, the idea that Wooster's the dog that could sniff out clues was the right decision. So for sure, Wooster is being sent to the scene of the crime. The only question then is where are our next best places? And I think... For sure, someone has to go to the house and talk to the mother. So either we send Cecily to the mother's house and the vicar to the other church, or we send the vicar to the mother's house and Cecily to the coroner. I think we have time before the re remembrance. It's not till Sunday. Do we know what day it is? It says first week of May. I get the feeling it's not Sunday yet. So I think we got a little bit of time before we go to that. I think... I think you got to go to the coroner. You've got to go to the coroner. Because maybe he had stuff on him. That could be a big clue. Okay, so we're going to send Cecily to the coroner and the vicar to the mother. And then on our next turn, we'll send the vicar to the church and we'll spread out a little bit. Okay. Let's do it. So, if you've not seen us play these games before, we go to our log where we're going to keep track of moves here. And we're going to remember that this is 1127. Okay, so Cecily is going to the coroner, which is, according to our contacts, coroner, local medical genius, is at E2. That is an E, right? So Cecily is going to E2, the coroner. Imogen, which is really Wooster, is how I'm thinking of it, is going to... Heller's Hole, which is our crime scene, which is C7. And the vicar is going to Albright's house, where the mother is. I'm a little, now I'm a little nervous. Like, we're sending this coroner who's not very perceptive to the house. Could he overlook something in one of the rooms that's important? Uh, this, this, this vicar is giving me fits. Like, everywhere we send him, I feel like he's at danger of missing something important. I wonder if the coroner is the safer place to send him. Like, we're not expecting him to be clever at the coroner. We're just expecting him to pick up any possessions. Maybe we should send... Abby said, is he really going to get a chance to search the house? I don't know. He'll have a calming way with the mother, and it could work in our favor. All right. All right, you guys convinced me. I can live with it. So the vicar is going to have a calming effect on the mother. Okay, so Albright's house is N46. 
So, again, I'm sort of repeating stuff that if you've been playing these games with me, you already know, but you can't go to a place twice. So once you send someone someplace, that's, your, that's the only chance you get to go to that place. Okay. Coroner. Wooster, the dog's going to Heller's Hole. And Vicar is going to the mother's house. All right, so before we enter, well, I guess we can enter these things in and then we'll talk about, then we'll mark on the map. All right, so we go to our website, Murders by Mail. We say we want to move. And then we put in our moves. So we're playing the cozy mystery, the blinded birder. Okay, so Cecily is going to the corner E2. Imogen and Wooster are going to C7. And the vicar is going to N46, the house of Albright's mother. And we click send. And if one of these places it doesn't have a planned response for, it'll complain, usually. Okay, that's it. So we've made our move. I feel pretty good about it, except I'm worried about sending the vicar places where he doesn't belong. All right, let's mark on our map where we sent people. So we sent... Someone, uh, before we've been doing colors, different colors for different people. I wonder if we should continue to do that. I'm not going to worry about who, I'm not going to worry about using different color for different people. I'm just going to put a sticker near it. So N46, where was the mother's house? Before we kept track with different colors, who we sent where, but it seems like it, did, it wasn't an important fact we just need to know who we sent what which places we visited and even this you don't really need to do this but it's sort of fun to keep track of things and occasionally it's useful because wait oh yeah we didn't go to n7 wait did we oh boy i think i did it wrong Because I went from my paper. Where did I? You guys saw it. Where did I send? I don't think I sent her to the coroner unless I looked it up. Did I look it up? The coroner was E2. Did I? Did I do that? Did I send her to the coroner? N26. And, and, and Tina says N26. All right, we need to... I, I Oh, I wrote it down here. Sorry. Okay, not in my notes. In my notes, I wrote down different locations. So N46 was Albright's mother's house, at least as I wrote it down. Let's make sure. Albright... There's N46. Okay, so this was dangerous, my notes, because I wrote down different things. But I did do this right. Okay, so C7 was the murder scene, and N46 was the mother's house, and then the last place we went was the coroner, who was at E2. Where is E2? Looks like it's down here somewhere. Is there a different set of E's? Where's E? I see a high value of E's. E24. Maybe they're not on the map. The E2. But we don't have to really... Alright, I'll just put it down here for now. E2. E18, E17. E16, I see it's over here. Okay, so the coroner is in here. Some government offices there. Okay. It's not very important to mark down the locations of our contacts because they're not involved in the case, but it's often useful to mark down scenes of crime stuff so we can see if things are clustered around it. All right, so this almost got me into trouble because I was keeping track of places we haven't gone. So now we have gone here, we have gone here, we have gone here. We haven't yet been to the church. 
and then the remembrance ceremony in the news was N6, I believe. All right, this is the important one. That's our master list of where we send people, though, and we did that one correctly. All right, and then our newspaper was... So I got this slightly wrong. N7 is the church, and 6 is the... Rem What's wrong with me? N7 is the remembrance, and 6 is the church. Okay. All right. Well, um, a bit of a surprise with this case. In the chat, Logan says, is there a distance scale here? I don't see it. No, I don't see any distance scale here either, although we could probably make some guesses based on, you know, church the size of a building. They've got a uh, a military air, airfield, by the RAF airfield is out here. And he was a little bit near it. I wonder if they're flying some... I wonder if that ghost and what he's looking at is... He's discovered, discovered some secret stuff. All right. Um... As I was saying, I, I'm, I'm surprised by how compelling this case is. It seemed to me the least compelling setting, the least compelling setup, like a cozy mystery, and yet somehow I feel more drawn into this case. It feels more real, our interaction with it, than the others. It just feels more personal, more real. Um, and this town is kind of intriguing. Okay, so thanks for joining me. Let me know in the comments or on the Board Game Geek Guild forum for this channel, which you'll find a link to in the community tab under YouTube, if you want to join for future playthroughs of this game. And if so, or if you do, let me know what days and times would be most convenient, and I'll try to pick a day and time that works for most people. If I don't hear differently, then we'll continue to play these at 3 p.m. on Sundays, and maybe we'll go for that, although it's a little tricky if the, you know, if a letter comes on Monday and we wait a whole week to play it, we've just delayed the next reply. So if they come in time to play every Sunday at 3 p.m., we'll do it. If people have different times that are more convenient, we'll see if we can do that. But it makes sense to try one game, not at 11 p.m., at 3 p.m., so maybe we'll continue this. Thanks for joining me. If you've joined me for any of the other weekend streams this weekend, thanks for those as well. I'll see you next time.